Welcome, mate, on Bloodthirsty Lore, but you can be Lord and tell you we're back on Paragon once again. We have great news. No, no, no. We have bloody amazing news about the new epic cards or the epic rare cards that will be coming to the game very soon. And there's multiple of them coming to the game, so there's more than one that we obviously expected them to come soon, but not this soon. And these cards do change the game in a dramatic way. There's new mechanics being added to the game. There's so many things occurring that we're going to talk about within this video. We're going to go through multiple cards, maybe I think it's close to a dozen. I'm not 100% sure, or 7 to a dozen cards of every great cards. So there's going to be 6 hoping we can unlock them in the future but let's describe each one and pretty much go through each one also the cards that we will be talking about within this video are in the card update for version 30.2 or update 30.2 so we're going to explain that all within this video so mates make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all the greatest and latest paragon gaming content and paragon news so without further ado let's get straight into this to be exact with the amount of cards that are coming out with the epic great count category that will be nine epic rare cards added in version 30.2 just to say that to make sure you guys know that straight away and now let's move on to the first card and that is Lazarus key it's a normal house the key that you can use but the bonus is kind of unique so you got obviously the normal passive which is the key that refreshes at bases uh, you can use the key once um, once or twice depending on how many charges it has and you get health out of this card as well so that's pretty nice followed up by the second unique passive which is while on a well collection pad gain plus 8.4 health regen and 80 plus max movement speed the max movement speed lasts for five seconds and that stacks every second up to 240 movement speed this is quite an interesting card in my opinion because it leads to sustain within the jungle obviously since you gain health regen and that obviously increase your health um, come back or pretty much your health that you gain when you're close to the harvester so you pretty much once you actually gain CXP of, out of a harvester or a well you do also get your health back so that's a form of sustain within this actual key or epic rare passive or epic rare card Followed up by the max movement speed that you get. You can continue that max movement speed while in travel mode. So pretty much while you're collecting CXP out of a house there, your travel mode will also activate or pretty much trigger. So that becomes 4.5 seconds and then you're into travel mode or uh, auto sprint, whatever you want to call it. Then you get the max movement speed from this because you'll be there for around 5 seconds. So that's an additional 240 movement speed flat bonus on the actual travel mode or your auto sprint which will mean pretty much your pathing in a jungle will be increased in movement speed. So you'll be able to clear a certain jungle, say if you want to clear red buff, and then instead of going to white buff straight away, you go to your CXP because um, the CXP to the harvester because that's full, and also you want to take the CXP out of the harvester or the card points out of the harvester, so you pretty much excel in fights and pretty much everything within Paragon because early game, CXP is quite an interesting mechanic, and obviously you need as much as possible to gain a massive lead. So you pretty much go there, get your CXP, then once you've done that, the passive or the unique epic passive does trigger, and pretty much when you go back in trail mode, you can sprint to another camp, which could be your white camp, or could be the opposite side of the jungle because obviously you getting more movement speed so why not so with this item or this actual card pretty much you're getting more of a pathing requirements obviously to use the epic passive to its full benefits but also this will lead to some interesting moments in fights due to the fact that this card will only activate or the epic passive will only activate while you're on a collection pad or well collection pad at a harvester so if you're there and the enemy players tries to counter jungle and pretty much tries to kill you while you're on that pad there's a guaranteed chance that you will end up winning that. And if he does run away, you have max movement speed or pretty much additional movement speed due to the fact that you gain 240 uh, movement speed while actually standing on the well collection pad. And pretty much when you chase that enemy down, he will have less movement speed compared to you, so you'll be able to get that kill quite easily. Also, Lazarus Key is a four-point universal card. So take that into consideration and remember that you must be on a well collection pad to activate the epic passive of this card. Now let's move on to the second epic rare card, and that is Thunder Cleaver, which is an epic active card that costs five points and also is a universal card. This card, your initial stats you'll get is a 5.5 attack speed bonus. A unique passive is melee basic attacks gain an additional 20% damage bonus to cleave. And this card is kind of interesting because the full upgrade bonus has an epic active. And that active is instantly deal basic attack damage as physical damage to nearby enemies. Cooldown is 30 seconds. And this card looks like it does highlight a lot on, say, melee heroes, especially heroes like female, like I do play, and obviously Grux, because Grux already has a cleave ability, so why not have an additional cleave ability? These do work out really well. It stands out so much. We might have seen this at the Epic Games HQ. There could be a possibility there. Uh, we had a little idea of this card back then, and now seeing this card right now is just obviously making me super hyped, and I can't wait to get that. 
but this card does shine in split pushing and also melee heroes and it's also good in a jungle if you want to try and clear multiple camps as quick as possible so if the camp or the pretty much what you're trying to defeat has multiple enemy units all you have to do is activate the full upgrade bonus or use the, even the unique passive of this epic rare card and you'll be able to do cleave damage towards the other minions that you're trying to hit as well. So if you hit one initial minion, the damage also does occur on the other two minions or the minions adjacent of the target minion or the target enemy unit. One of the most interesting aspects of this card is when you're versing an enemy Iggy and Scorch, and obviously that is a pain because Iggy and Scorch is a god at split pushing. But with this card within your build, and especially if you're a melee hero, you can defeat the purpose of Iggy's existence or Iggy and Scorch's existence within the actual map due to the fact that his lane pressure will be less because you have this card within your build, which will help Help you destroy minions as quick as possible the same speed as that range Iggy Scorch player. Also Thundercleave's epic active ability is a burst damage mechanic so take that into consideration while using that card within your build. So the third epic rare card is Imperial Mask and that costs 4 points and it obviously does fall into the order infinity and is an epic active. We know about this card before but I will explain it within this video as well. It does have a unique active or unique toggle type of ability which allows a player that has the card to switch between 3 stats or three type of utility factors or pretty much versatile factors within this card. You start off with physical damage and energy damage as one of the toggle functions, followed up by the next one, which is physical armor and energy armor, followed by the other one, which is mana regen. So the physical damage and energy damage you get is plus 19.5 for each category. The physical armor and energy armor is plus 33 in each category. And also your mana regen is at plus 0.9 mana regen. So it's pretty good item, especially in the early game. I did talk about how good this item is in the early game because it is such a crazy item and can lead to so many interesting scenarios and moments within Paragon. Also take into consideration to know what stance you're in, you will see an icon towards your character or the lower part of your screen or your lower part of your HUD that will showcase you having increased physical armor, increased damage, or increased mana regen. So that's a way to pretty much indicate to yourself what um, toggle function you're on with your Imperium Mask, but also any other card that we do discuss within this video that does give you a certain bonus, like our other card, which was Lazarus Keyword that we did talk about previously, that gave you movement speed and also health regen. you also see that appear on the lower part of your screen. So that's pretty much an indication for you players to understand what type of abilities or stats increases that you're getting while activating that certain epic passive or epic active. Or epic toggle. Well, that's surprising. It's already 2 a.m. I'm gonna have some refreshments and come back and make the end of this video. This might go for quite a bit because these epic rare cards are bloody amazing. <laughs> the next epic rare card is called Blight Bones and it does fall into the growth affinity, costs four points, and is an epic passive card. It does give you initially 100 health. Unique passive is when he by a critical strike apply blight to the attacker. Blight reduces healing by 75%. So this is quite an interesting mechanic to put into the game since there isn't too many healing mechanics in the game at this very moment but it's obviously quite interesting that reduces the health regen items that the player does have if they're trying to pretty much attack you but the thing I don't really understand because I didn't get to use this card quite a lot at Epic Games HQ and it's that unique passive when hit by critical strike uh, say if someone hits you with crit chance or pretty much gets crit bonus on you does like 400 damage instead of doing 200 is that what they're trying to say there or is it because the enemy player is on super low health and he's obviously in this critical state or critically wounded pretty much. So if you do get hit by that player, the blight effect only affects that certain aspect of a character once they are below a certain percentage of health, which is a very situational card in my opinion. So I personally think blight bones is one interesting mechanic, but it won't shine at this very moment. So it's kind of sad to see that blight bones isn't bright at all at this very moment. Obviously when new heroes do come out and more healing ability heroes do come as well, we could see this card shining quite a lot then. That's just due to a meta shift within the game, but also taking into consideration we'll have more cards and a lot more stuff in the future as well when things like that do occur. But this card is interesting. If you want to give it a go, I suggest you do so. But personally, I don't play a lot of growth heroes except for selective heroes I do love that do fall into the melee hero category. But this is one card I won't be taking, sadly. But I do see this card being quite interesting while versing someone one-on-one. -on -one, and you do have this card within your kit, then it will shine quite a bit. Because if the health regen or the base stats of health regen on that hero that you are versing 
when once he does fall into critical state or criti critically wounded state and he does attack you, he won't gain an enough health regen to pretty much sustain while fighting you. So pretty much this will help you destroy the enemy pretty much more quickly compared to not having this card at all. Another interesting moment that could occur within this game is if Rampage does have that blind effect on him and he tries to ulti while critically wounded, which means that he won't be able to gain enough health regen from his ulti because it'll be reduced dramatically by 75% which will make it completely easier to destroy a Rampage and not expect him to pretty much jump away and gain instant amount of health regen or health back. So this is a pretty good card in those aspects, but there's a lot of testing I have to do with this card because I don't know too much about it. It's pretty much I'm not comfortable with the card yet, so I have to test that out for myself to fully understand it. Also, this card does affect lifesteal items as well. The next epic rare card is Teller Blink, which is an epic active card, costs 5 mana, and does fall into the affinity of intellect. The initial stats you'll get is 0.3 mana regen. The unique active is consume 35% of your base mana to teleport forward, cannot activate while below 35% mana, and also does have a 15 second cooldown. And also, the unique passive of this card is is card cannot be used for five seconds after taking damage from an enemy hero. And this card is pretty much a variation of Blink Charm, which is currently in the game for the Intellect Affinity group, which is obviously quite interesting due to the fact that it does use your base mana, a percentage of it, uh, say if you do build more mana on this character, it won't take your bonus mana, it only take your ba base mana to teleport forward. Uh, there's a 15 second cooldown, so that's dramatically lower compared to Blink Charm. This card will be more useful if trying to escape before enemies do engage in you, or pretty much an engaging type of equipment card that you can use within your kit. As you can see within this example, when Steel is pretty much using it to destroy the enemy team. So there's a couple of scenarios you can use this card for. Obviously, it's quite interesting, and it could lead to some very good scenarios in your favor. Also remember, if you want to fight, you want to try your best to not take any damage, so you're able to use this card in every scenario. The next epic rare card is called Stab Link, which is an epic active card, does fall into the Corruption Affinity group, and also does cost 5 points. And the initial stats are 1.4 health regen. We've also described this item in the past due to the fact that it was in part of the Twitch Head's Head event that did occur not long ago. The unique active is consume 20% of your base health to teleport forward, cannot activate while critically wounded, cooldown is 15 seconds, the unique passive is card cannot be used for 5 seconds after taking damage from enemy hero. Like the other card, this is a variation of Blink Charm for the Corruption Affinity. You're also able to put some health regen upgrades on this card. As you'll see from the slots that are actually on the card, on the bottom part of the card, the three circles, that's how you know that you can put upgrades on that certain epic rare card. And you also would have noticed that you do gain health regen with this card, and with the previous card, which is also a variation of Blink Charm, which was Teleblink, you do gain mana regen, due to the fact that you'll be losing those as the unique active, which will take a base health or base mana, which was base mana of 35% on Teleblink, and with this is 20% of your base health. Also, if you're building health upgrades, or pretty much getting a lot of health, cards on your actual character the health or the base health won't be too dramatic due to the fact that your health is going to be more compared to your actual base health but if you do use this card constantly as a way pretty much to get across the map you'll fall into a critically wounded state which will mean that you won't be able to use this card at all the next epic rare card is scarab claws which is an epic passive card falls into the corruption affinity group and costs six points this card is kind of interesting. Your initial base stats are 5.5 attack speed and a 2.5 cooldown reduction. The unique passive is on hit with a basic attack to a target with a shield shreds all of their armor for 6 seconds. This is an interesting card because there isn't many shields within the game unless you look at the other cards that do fall into the order infinity which do have some shielding items or shielding abilities and actives. So that's kind of interesting. This card will shine in those scenarios. It's more of a counter card in my opinion that would use against a mirror as you've seen in the demonstration, pretty much she puts a shield on steel and then the shield on steel gets depleted within seconds due to the fact of this card being in the guy's kit on Grimax and pretty much destroys that steel slowly after the shield has been depleted instantly. So the card is intriguing like the Blight Bones, but I don't know how much of an effective card this will be in Paragon. At least not yet until another meta shift does occur. The next epic rare card is Pain Eater. It does have an epic passive, does fall into the Fury Affinity group, which is an amazing affinity group, and does cost 5 points. The initial stats are 100 health, the unique passive is while critically wounded, gain plus 40% lifesteal. And you don't usually see cards that do have a percentage increase usually just a flat amount but due to that one factor of this card having a percentage increase of lifesteal this could be quite interesting say if I have 10 lifesteal within my build while I'm critically wounded I'm gaining 40 lifesteal 
or flat uh, flat amount of 40 life still due to the fact of the percentage increase of this actual item when I'm critically wounded. And that is very good due to the fact that your presence will become more known to the enemy team because if you have a 1v1 against the enemy while you're critically wounded, pretty much you'll gain your health back and then obviously won't be critically wounded. But once the enemy does hit you once again, then you're back into critically wounded stage and you're still in a 1v1 scenario. So pretty much it can chain on and go for such a long fight and you'll be able to destroy the enemy quite easily. But if the enemy player is... Um, say a hero that does have growth affinity and does have blade bones as one of the epic rare cards within his build that's when you will fall behind that's like a stray counter to this card right here due to the fact that you'll gain only 25% of the life still from the overall amount of your pain eater bonus and now let's move on to the last epic rare card which is the most hyped card and I can't wait to unlock this card for my build on Figmao or pretty much any fury affinity member or hero within this actual roster at this very moment and the last epic rare card is called blink shot which is an epic active card, does fall into the Fury Affinity group, and does cost 5 points. The initial stats are 2.5% cooldown reduction, so you're able to put some upgrades on that full cooldown reduction. The unique active is teleport forward. The passive is cooldown will be reset on play, kill, or assist within 5 seconds after using Blink Shot. And also the cooldown reduction or the cooldown for this actual card is 300 seconds, which is obviously a dramatic amount compared to Blink Jump or the other teleporting cards that we did talk about within this actual Epic Rare Cards video, which are other variations of Blink Charm for different affinities like the Corruption and Intellect one, which will tell Blink and Stab Link. So the idea and the playstyle you have to have while having this card is really aggressive. Due to the fact that you have low cooldown reduction already, which will mean you can use your abilities more often to be able to get more kills, which leads to more kill resets and then leads to actually using this card more often to teleport to um, more locations and pretty much getting more mobility because of this card. So pretty much what you want to do is go full aggressive on the enemy team, use Blink Shot as a way to initiate or engage a fight then kill a certain player because you're a fury player you want to kill someone as quick as possible then reposition yourself with the kill reset and then obviously the ability reset of this card or the unique active or the epic active you can use that once again to reposition yourself into another scenario to kill someone else or pretty much escape from that fight before you get picked off. But you guys need to remember if you do use Blink Shot to pretty much initiate a fight and you don't get a kill within five seconds or assist with five seconds, that means this card will have a cooldown of 300 seconds, which is a massive punishment for using that initiation tool or pretty much engaging a fight like that. So pretty much try your best to use Blink Shot in a scenario where you guarantee will get a kill. So if you see the enemy marksman or ADC, whatever you want to call them, if you see them there, Obviously, try to jump them and kill them as quick as possible so then you're able to use this ability to reposition yourself or escape or do as many things as you can or whatever comes into mind when in that scenario. So those were the nine epic rare cards that will be coming within the card update of version 30.2 or update 30.2, Lazarus Key, Thunder Cleaver, Epirian Mask, Blight Bones, Tele Blink, Stab Link, Scarab Claws, Pain Eater, and Blink Shot. Obviously, I have some cards in there that I'm really hyped for compared to others, but if I do get any of these cards, I'll be super hyped. I think Imperial Mask will be given straight away due to the fact that he won the Twitch head-to-head -head event, so it's pretty cool. But guys, leave a comment down below in the comment section tell me what your guys thoughts about these epic rare cards and which card are you most hyped for to get within this upcoming update so mates if you enjoy this video show us by smashing that like button let's try to get 50 likes on this video and if you makes want to see more paragon gaming content on my channel all you have to do is share this with your friends and hit the subscribe button to become a mate today and that is all for this video oh times go but don't you worry we're we'll back very soon hey jazz boys this ain't seen nothing yet you mates know I'm super hyped for Blink Shot because obviously it is a kill reset card. They should just call it Bloodthirsty Lord. Would have made so much sense because I'm going to get multiple kills with this card. <laughs> Man, that it feels right.